These days, it seems the minifigure is more popular than the LEGO brick, and I think LEGO knows that too. They're showing more effort on the minifigure front, but as releases continue, we're seeing compromises take form. Print quality, mold design, and accessorizing are all things that have been called to question. Another key factor is how minifigures are being distributed, as LEGO has yet to find a consistently consumer-friendly standpoint for it. Throughout this series so far, I've made it my goal to bring these issues to light, but rather than just complaining about it, I've made it my goal to come up with reasonable compromises for the fans without going too far outside of LEGO's limitations, while also encouraging LEGO to spread their wings as well. At the start of this series, we focused on four specific categories, and while episodes from here on out will definitely be tapping into these, some themes have struggles that are outside of those categories as well. To get things rolling again, I think we might tap into one of those categories again while on the subject of LEGO Minecraft. This theme has been consistently on my personal radar as one of LEGO's most perfect themes. The near-limitless nature of both LEGO and Minecraft pairs so well together, it wouldn't make much sense for them not to work together, and their history together proves that. However, it would seem that LEGO Minecraft is showing signs that it may be suffering from its own case of offering the bare minimum. It's somewhat a similar situation to what has been going on with LEGO Star Wars in that they do offer unique minifigures very regularly, but they don't offer all that many for the prices you pay for. Sort of. I'll go into more detail as we get to it. By the way, I'll be using the term mobs to describe any characters, creatures, or enemies that are being referred to, as that is what the game refers to them all collectively. At the start of the theme, you were only getting Steve and Alex for heroes. They would regularly feature different armor that you can craft in the Minecraft game, and that being the only variety they would ever have. As years have gone on, the theme has tried its hardest to include completely unique mobs in almost every single set it offers. Steve and Alex are still around, of course, but they've begun to feature unique facial expressions, which chalks them up as new minifigures as well, just like their counterparts in these waves of sets. Throughout Minecraft's procedurally generated worlds, players will also come across allies and foes that don't tend to be all that various outside of armor some may wear. This can range from villagers and traders to interact with, as well as skeletons and zombies to fight. All of these character types take on the minifigure anatomy with heads designed specifically for the theme, but you could argue that there are other enemy mobs in this theme that use those heads that don't fit that anatomy that absolutely count as minifigures as well. I've established before that, while brick-built characters, named or otherwise, aren't often processed as minifigures to the shopper, especially someone who is a LEGO fan first, certain characters have unique molds that prevent them from being considered part of the build, allowing them to be considered part of the minifigure lineup. For Minecraft, you have enemies like Creepers and Endermen that fit that build perfectly. Together with their fully minifigure counterparts, they can help us achieve the expected amount of minifigures for the value of a set, something I've dubbed minifigs per interval. To simplify it, you're looking for a minifig for every 10 US dollars and its equivalents that you spend, up to $50, and then another minifig for every $20 in addition as you go. All aforementioned minifigures and minifigure adjacent characters apply, and because of that, I have to be honest here, when I was first putting this video together, I had not properly grasped on just how LEGO Minecraft sets manage this. Pretty much anything $35 or less not only has a part count that is extremely close to expectations, if not right on the money, but also regularly hit a minifig quantity that meets minifigs per interval to a T, if not providing enough pieces to make up where that's lacking. Although, as we have gotten deeper into the 2020s, the sets aren't nearly as much of a deal as they used to be, and I know people are feeling the effects of that. We had it good for so long! However, when you get to some of the larger sets, you start to notice that things take a turn quite sharply. Most of these larger sets only offer around 4 minifigs on average, and some of these sets are nearing $100 in price if not more. I fully understand that these days, with the player mob minifigures almost exclusively being unique, we have the printing for all of them eating into what budget the Minecraft design team has. A bonus of next to never needing to make new molds for their characters, but even then, there is plenty of room for at least one more of these unique minifigures, if not really beefing up the enemy mob minifigure selection in pretty much all of these. In the game, all enemy mobs spawn in and try to hoard the player mob as they enter the enemy's proximity. If you have only one player mob in a set, along with a single creeper, and a lone husk, in a set that is $60, people are going to feel that this set is lacking in the minifigure department. One would argue that this set has a horse, a baby rabbit, a bat, some slimes, and a cave spider, 
but a couple of those are single piece characters which don't add towards the minifigure count, or are rig built characters. They're a part of the build, and I would argue do not have the same draw as minifigure characters either. Maybe that's just me. It does seem that LEGO sees the creature mobs count towards that total. This would make this Badlands mineshaft seem like a more exciting value, but it's like I said, lots of people will not see it that way. Another great example of this is the windmill farm at $55. It only has three minifigures in it, but with LEGO's logic of buildable creatures counting towards that total, the two sheep fill the need for more characters from that perspective. For that price, I can't say that's very satisfying. Same with a panda haven at $50. It only has two minifigures in it, but it does include a pair of pandas in there. The deep dark battle is a worst case scenario as it only has two minifigures for a set that's valued at $65. Now I can hear you arguing, Pan you're taking this from a LEGO fan's perspective too much, Minecraft fans will be just fine with these. I'd say that as a valid argument. If sets like the Iron Golem Fortress and the deep dark battle weren't seeing mass clearance, I think there's some crossover, and it seems to be with a specific kind of set that comes out of LEGO Minecraft. For some reason, LEGO likes to price these sets that double as giant character builds at a premium, for the sake of the fact that it has a giant character in it. The Iron Golem Fortress looks like an $80,868 piece set, and while that price count is accurate, it's priced at $110 for some reason. Oh wait, that's because it can be a giant Iron Golem too. People will see five minifigures, including the very uncommon Charge Creeper, and a brick-built character in the normal-sized Iron Golem there, sure, but that doesn't quite add the necessary value expected for a set price this way, especially with how far and away the build itself is from having that value. The Giant Golem build is, as I said, a part of the build. That does not add the accessorial value a character brings in any shape or form, outside of being cool, of course. Though, not $110 cool. You also see this with sets that contain the game's bosses. Along with the aforementioned Deep Dark Battle, you have a set like the Ender Dragon and End Ship that looks to be about $60 tops for 657 pieces. It's $80, and I have no doubt that it's due to the inclusion of the Ender Dragon that it's being priced at a premium, even though it is a part of the build, and does not add any additional value you wouldn't have got otherwise. For both of these examples, as well as many others, I think we could all agree that the prices would be a bit more tolerable if they included more minifigures in them. So, what can we do to remedy these issues? In the case of both sets, a fancy new player mob is always welcome, but I think Minecraft might serve itself better if it decided to reuse some player mob prints. Not having to design new minifigure prints is always cost effective, and makes room for even more quantity of characters at the same cost of design. A great way to do this, I feel, is by getting the rest of the default skin options from the game out in minifigure form, and then give them all different facial expressions, like they've been doing with Steve and Alex. This way, even if they're reused characters, they're at least unique enough to add to your selection of characters. And maybe LEGO can start including extra heads in these sets with the default characters, so you can always have their neutral expression as well. LEGO Friends does this for a lot of their characters, so it's not like it wouldn't be a hard ask. Another option would be adding even more enemy mob minifigures to a set. You can't have too many skeletons, zombies, creepers, or endermen, just to name a few. As long as their inclusion makes sense, go all out. Variety is key, so for something with variety like skeletons and zombies, making them jockeys or giving them different kinds of armor can really spice things up, especially since the player mobs can wear the armor too. If a set is set in the end, endermen have to be all over, so the set should emulate that too. Same thing with piglins in the nether sets. This will help meet expectations of character options for the builder, but can also make their LEGO Minecraft world even more like the games. Going this route is also smart because LEGO already makes all these characters. However, while the issue with needing to order these quantities to be manufactured needs to be considered, they also might not have the budget to bother. So like what was at risk over in LEGO Star Wars, one set could have two skeletons or one skeleton and a zombie. Budget would only allow two characters, making additional characters even more challenging. For a theme like LEGO Minecraft, it's also hard to cut back on printing for their precedent in set, as well as set quantity to properly offer more budget to other sets as it only gets so many sets a year. More than some, but much less than others. This is completely ignoring the fact that the Minecraft theme is licensed, meaning all terms, shapes, and iconography Mojang owns has to have a license purchased by LEGO in order to use any of it. 
As I'm sure you all already understand if you've been watching this series, licensing is a huge sink for the budgets of these themes. Now, based on current prices, as well as so many in the past, it's clear that the license for Minecraft hasn't been as egregious as some others, but that often is as much of an issue with just how much of the budget it takes anyways. This can all be amended if the multi-billion dollar company that is LEGO decides to boost the budget of their themes further. For now, the bare minimum is what we've got. While I have you, this episode on Minecraft has been rather specific in its problem areas, but I feel it would be good to highlight some other areas that can improve on with the availability of their characters. I believe that every single type of new mob released in the game needs to show up in a set as soon as possible. Three years should be the absolute longest the audience has to wait, but with the relationship we know Lego and Mojang have, that hasn't seemed to be much of an issue. I can only ask that they keep it that way. To add on to that, if there are any other mobs that are even older than that, that have not showed up in a Lego set, that needs to be remedied as fast and as soon as possible, even if it's just a recognizable variant of another mob in the game that already has Lego representation. I also firmly believe that every uncommon mob should be immortalized in LEGO every four years at the most. Waiting six years for a new witch mob was painful for the fans, but then we also haven't got a big slime since 2017, ignoring that we've never got small slimes ever. They've been there since the beginning of the game! Amazing that it has taken this long. The baby zombie head would work perfect, just print the face on it and call it good. As I've established here, LEGO Minecraft's minifigure problems are not nearly as bad as some other themes, but as LEGO's prices continue to increase, I can see it being jeopardized on all fronts, rather than just with larger sets. Let's hope it never comes to that. Something that I will have to give the theme credit for is that it has been so wonderfully consistent. It's rare to get that with themes that have been around for as long as LEGO Minecraft has. So as long as it continues to offer excellent renditions of these iconic worlds with fearless enthusiasm, I don't think we have to worry too much about that. Which, I really wish I could say the same about LEGO Sonic the Hedgehog, but I'll save it for the next episode in the series which you can find on the end screen when it's available, as well as a playlist for the rest of the series. Do you feel that LEGO Minecraft has been consistently good? If not, what would you like to see changed? You can let me know down in the comments, and while you're down there, you can like and subscribe. Be sure to click the bell, as that makes sure I show up in your feeds. I'm Penn, and I'll see you next time.